Greetings, YouTube. Today I thought I'd throw out another character portrait. This isn't a character I've used for anything. This is just one that I've kind of whipped up inside my head out of boredom while at work. Um, and the character is Erasmus E. Uh, Stickle. Um, the E for is for Edmund. Uh, now, Erasmus is a, uh, a wizard and a very traditional wizard. Um, his particular exper expertise is in uh, aberrations, mutations, and weird things like that. So a skill focus in probably dungeoneering, uh, nature. Um, and while he is interested in nature, he's interested in things that diverge from nature. So, well, he does know some things about your standard natural animals and such. His preference really are the really freaky things that fall outside that. Some of the natural curing things, you know, cows with five legs, snakes with two heads. But then since it's a magical world, they can get very strange indeed. Um, who knows what happens if, if the, uh, if, if, uh, if Bossy gets into a potion, what happens to her offspring. Um, but mostly he really loves the aberrations of nature. So the abelacts, the otiugs, um, the mimics, the really weird, bizarre things. They are his fascination. Now, he was raised in a somewhat academic home. His mother and father own a print business. Now, it's his father's business, technically. Um, it's his father, also named Erasmus, as is his grandfather named Erasmus. Um, and it, it was the Erasmus, the oldest, uh, that founded the print business. And while it was a successful print business, it didn't make a huge profit, and it was what we probably consider small scale. Um, along comes er Erasmus's um, mother, Merrill. Now, Meryl came from a merchant family. The problem is, is her father was very, very successful. She had over older siblings. There wasn't a lot of growth room in that particular field. It could be any field you wanted to, any merchant field that you want. Um, so she decided she was going to try to branch out on her own. And rather than start from scratch, she thought it would be probably best if she could get into a, an established business, one that has a little history behind it, um, and a, and a ready-made um, customer base, and then apply her skills, which were somewhat extensive, at being a better merchant and turn that business from um, an acceptable uh, revenue stream until an, to an exceptional revenue stream. Uh, she shopped around, found a business that looked about right, and had an eligible son. She intentionally wooed um, Erasmus's father, Erasmus, um, and was quite successful. Now, Erasmus, while a bit of the absent-minded professor, um, wasn't stupid. He knew what was going on. Uh, he had been raised in the print shop, and he had always been more interested in the objects that his father was printing than the business itself. Um, and he was an only child. He was going to inherit the business, one of the reasons that Merrill was interested in him. Uh, and he wasn't interested in the business. He could have kept the business going along like it was forever, um, never really expanding it, probably keeping it respectable, but never making huge profits. Um, again, he was more of a scholar. In fact, he became so well known as a scholar, even though technically he was in charge of a print shop, that people came to him looking for advice, even people from the local Mages Academy even though it wasn't a huge academy. It wasn't Hogwarts. It was a much smaller scale. I think more of a community college. But people still came to him regularly to get advice um, when it came to sco uh, um, scholastic subjects. And his uh, base, uh, knowledge base was fairly broad. He was a, he was a, a, a great reader um, and really loved to get deep into a topic before he would get bored and move on to the next one. But he always kept his references around, and he was very good at remembering how to find things when he needed them. Um, he was very organized in that regard. Even he may have not have been a great businessman, but he still had a very strong structure of uh, order and, uh, and research, kept extensive records, and uh, had actual uh, library-style um, storage means so that he'd always make find the book that he needed when he needed it. Can't quite say it was the full Dewey Decibel system, but along those lines. So along comes Beryl. She woos him. 
he realizes is going on, so he essentially makes the deal with her. He says, okay, I understand what you want. I'm going to tell you what I want. He says, I want to have a child, and I want to have a regular sex life. So that's what I want. What do you want? She wants the business. She wasn't um, disagreeable to a regular sex life. Sounds pleasant to her. So they get married. Um, and the result is a baby boy. Now, Merrill's father was named Edmund. So Erasmus Edmund uh, Stickle became um, are the, my char the character's name. And the parents flipped a coin. So the father won. So he got to have his son named Erasmus. His mother, however, um, is always referred to Erasmus as Edmund. She says it's to avoid confusion with her husband and her grand and his grand his his father, um, er, um, Erasmus's grandfather. But Erasmus's father think, thinks it was because she's a very sore loser. Because if there's one thing Merrill hates more than anything, is to lose. And she is a good business person. She's very lawful neutral. She will never break the law, but she will push it right to the edge, and she can be downright cutthroat. You really don't want Meryl with your name on her list of people she wants out of her way for business deals. She will undercut anyone, and she will make sure that she gets the biggest slice of any pie. She's very good at what she does. So good that over time, she essentially became the printing business in the town they lived in. She not only she established this, this little domain, um, with multiple print shops, all controlled by her and her very loyal um, assistant uh, managers, to the point where she decided that she really needed to move up to the next stage. So, shortly after Erasmus was born, they moved to the capital, where there was a much better um, mages guild, um, the main mages guild of the country in question. Again, whatever country you want, whatever towns you want, you figure it out. Um, she purchased an existing print shop, again, established customer base, turned it around, and by the time Erasmus was 10, um, his mother controlled the majority of the print business in the town. Then it looked like eventually she may control all of it. All the other um, print businesses had joined together in an attempt to stop her, but they had so far been unsuccessful. Um, Erasmus, like his father, had an academic bent, um, decided to um, study as magic as much as he could because he had an interest in it. And when he was 11, his mother was able to get him into the, the uh, Mages Academy because she had already sealed the deal at becoming the official printer of the Mages Guild, Mages Academy. Um, so, solid long term contract. She was not going to have to worry about revenue anytime soon. She still wanted more. Winning and acquisition were her goals. The money was just a means of keeping score. Um, so at 11, a little a year younger than most students, um, Erasmus entered the academy um, and began to study um, to become a, a, a wizard. And again, that's where he really focused on aberrations and mutations, uh, eventually graduating. He actually stayed an extra year to get some, uh, do some honor study. So he graduated at the same time as the rest of his classmates, um, even though he had been a year younger. And he uh, decided that he really needed to do some field work. So he decides to go forth and join an adventuring party. His parents are a little concerned with the fact that his tea, like his father, is kind of the absent-minded professor style, send one of their house guards with him as a protector. Um, so he's going to have a retainer, I guess you might call him, um, as his protector, as a GM. I don't know how you'd want to balance that out at all. Um, maybe it's someone else in the party can play this character, or you don't have a problem with a player having an assistant that they play at the same time. I know that there have been times when every player in a game that I've run has had at least one retainer of some variety with them. Um, sometimes it's just as simple as like a shield bearer or a, you know a, a spear carrier. Um, sometimes it's more of a, a, a full-blown character that is uh, almost as powerful and as in, as as in depth as the player characters themselves. Um, so this is just an idea. Again, Erasmus 
his main goal, besides studying topics of aberration and mutation, is to become a full-blown professor at the Academy. Though he would like to get enough field work under his belt that no one will ever um, accuse him of being all academic and no worldly experience. So, maybe not quite Indiana Jones, but close to it. Um, he really wants to make sure that the field work will allow him to have the gravitas when he becomes a full-blown professor when he's older. Right now, he's okay with exploring the world, seeing, it, seeing what he can find, and if he can make a little profit at the same time, why not? He got that from his mother. He's not quite as cutthroat. I think he's probably neutral good, um, as his father is. Uh, but he still is not going to turn away from an honest coin. So there you go. Um, Erasmus and uh, Edmund Stickle, the aberration uh, specialist and would-be wizard explorer.